starring Jimmy Stewart in A Guy Who Had to Have a Horse on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Now that the children are outdoors in all kinds of unpleasant weather, here is helpful information about DuPont Zeland Durable Repellent Finish. It gives weather protection to rain wear, sports wear, and children's clothes. When you buy rain and snow clothes with the Zeland tag on them, you'll be keeping your youngsters snug this winter. Unlike ordinary water repellents, DuPont Zeland continues to give protection even after washing or cleaning. It's a durable repellent finish. Zeland is one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents A Guy Who Had to Have a Horse, starring Jimmy Stewart as Vance Gorman on The Cavalcade of America. Barman who's born in the army. And, like any self respecting cowboy, born into the cavalry. <laughs> now, in case you ain't noticed, there's eats and whistle wet material on that table over there. Yeah, yeah, but don't eat and drink everything. Leave some for the guest of honor. That's all time. <laughs> Hey, uh, you care for something, Vance? No, nope, I'm too excited. Vance, it's a great thing you're doing. And it's right and proper that you, you pick the horse cavalry. Oh, I'd feel kind of silly on anything else, Kelly. Sure, sure you would, son. I built the same way back in 98. That's why I picked the Rough Riders. But uh, I want to tell you something, Vance. What's that, Kelly? Well, it ain't all going to be fancy dress parades. Some of it ain't going to be nice to look at. Put it here. But there's one way you can keep your head and your heart just like they are now. Like they are now? Yep. Clear-headed and good-hearted. Hold on to some dream you got, Vance. Never lose it. Not even for a second. Keep it in your head and your heart. You got a dream, ain't you, boy? Oh, I reckon I have, Kelly. I want to come back here to Montana and raise the finest cow horses in the country. I guess I'll keep that in my head. That's it, then, Vance. Now, let me tell you, I want... Stop the racket, boy. Stop the racket. Well, being the official speech maker of the show, Gavin, I think it's about time to make one. And now, uh, this party is for Vance Gorman, who are going away. We're going to miss him because we like him. He's our people... And we ain't going to forget. And we're not going to let him forget it either. Oh, all right, Sam. Bring it right up here. Put it down right here, Sam. Vance, are you ain't going to embarrass me, are you? <laughs> no, no. In that box, Vance, there's a little present we got for you. Open it up, kid. Well, do I have to make a speech after a look at it? <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, doggone. A saddle. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty, boys. Well, I ain't never had a saddle like that in my life before. Who is he? Boy, do I have to make a speech? Well, shucks, I, I don't know. I don't know what to... Well, I, I, I reckon the only thing I can say is just what Kelly just told me. He said that... I should keep hold on something inside me. Well, I... I got that something. And it's the same thing y'all got, I guess. Maybe it's this country. Montana. Maybe it's just the air in the morning or the sun in the evening. Might just be the dust on the trail when we're running horses in the spring. Could be that it's the horses when they come in from the runs. The way they walk with their heads up and... The way they run free. Like the poorer's haul it broke, you know. But I know I got it, and I'll remember it. And having this saddle with me in the cavalry is going to help me remember more than anything else. And I promise you that 
It ain't going to make no difference where I go or what I do. This saddle will be with me. It'll a piece of you and Montana, and that's all. <laughs> Come in. Well, Vance, you back already? Yep, Kelly, I'm back. Well, sit down, sit down, tell me about it. Hey, how was it, son? All right. You look like a sick horse. Feel like one. Vance, you ain't trying to tell me they turned you down. Why, doggone them no good sway back means. Oh, no, I'll tell you, you don't want to get yourself all lathered up like that. Yeah, I'll get lathered up if I want to. Vance, you take me right down to that place and let me tell them an ear. Oh, pull up now, Kelly. It ain't that bad. I wasn't turned down. You wasn't? Then why in thunder you're looking like a gray book coyote? Well, Kelly, I, you, you ain't going to like it no better than I did. I w- went down there and... Doggone it, Kelly. They got me in the Navy. Holy jumping, bro. The Navy? The Navy. You in the Navy? I'm in the Navy. <laughs> well, doggone. Didn't you tell him you was a cowboy? Didn't oh, you? Oh, I talked you... myself hoarse down there, Kelly. I told him I got seasick. I told him I never saw him more in a lake. I told him water scares the lights out of me, but they got me in the Navy. Who's our senator from Montana? Oh, it ain't going to do no good. I got a report tomorrow. You can't do it. You can't. I tell you what. You hide out in the hills till this thing blows over. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's no use, Kelly. I'm a sailor. Do you hear that, what I'm telling you? I'm a sailor. They're going to put me on a boat uh, with water all around me. Not a horse in sight. What am I going to do without horses? I've got nothing to hold on to. No, no, boy. No, no, no. no. Don't, don't go on like that. <clears throat> Maybe they got uh, some horses in the Navy. You ever see one? Well, of course, they ain't never been in the Navy, but uh, this is a big war, boy. No telling what they'll do. Kelly, I know what I'm going to do. Oh, but... look now, man. No, 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 no. Don't get the bit in your teeth and run off. <clears throat> Just forget what I said about hiding out. No, it ain't that. Kelly, you remember that saddle you boys give me? Sure. <clears throat> Shouldn't give you a robot. No, no. But I'm going to take that saddle with me. What for? You loco? No, I ain't. You remember telling me that no matter how bad things got, as long as I had some idea, a dream, I wouldn't get all lost inside? Sure, but the saddle. It's going with me. You know why, Kelly? Because someday, someplace, I'm going to find me a horse to go with it. In the Navy? In or out, I'm going to find me a horse. And it'll be the best horse I ever had because... No matter what a man wants, as long as it's good, he'll get it if he wants it bad enough. All right, all right, pipe it down. Pipe it down. Okay, you're in boot camp now. We're trying to make sailors out of you. First thing, get your gear in order and... What? What the devil is that? Hey, you, what's this? This? Yeah, this. Well, I guess you'd call it a saddle. <laughs> What's your name? Vance Gorman, Chief. Get rid of that saddle. Oh, I'm um, afraid I couldn't do that, Chief. What? Why not? Well, Chief, now, uh, I ain't trying to be funny here, but this saddle was a going away present from the boys up in Montana. They thought I was going into the cavalry, see? I carry it the same way Benny there. Takes along his guitar, or Eddie packs an accordion. Maybe like you carry a souvenir, you do, don't you? <laughs> well, yeah, sure, but but it ain't a saddle. But it is something you wouldn't want to give up. <laughs> well, all right, keep it. But tell me something, cowboy. Yes, sir? You don't really expect to find a horse in the Navy, do you? Well, maybe it sounds crazy, but I sort of got a real hunch that's... Someplace I'm going to find me a horse, and when I do, yeah, I'm going to be the happiest sailor in the United States Navy. Uh, hi, Vance. Hi, Danny. You ever see such a godforsaken spot? Oh, if I could only look at just the postcard, even of. 
Radio City or the Third Avenue well. That is, don't give me the willy. Oh, it's kind of pretty. Well, maybe it is to you, but I don't like palm trees, sand, mosquitoes, or japs. No, no more japs. Well, not now. Hey, you, you still got that saddle? Sure. <laughs> hey, see, now, you lugged that thing through Boot Camp in San Diego. Three battles, two amphibious landings, not out, out here in the South Pacific. <laughs> you never gave up the horse idea, did you? No. Nope. What's so wonderful about a horse? Well, it ain't only the horse, Benny. It's the idea. What idea? Well, before I shoved off, an old friend of mine said that if, if a man had an idea or a dream in his head, a good one, nothing would bother him. He would never forget that he was a human being. Hey, Vance! 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 Oh, well, yeah, thank gosh, I've been looking all over. What's he, Yeti? Hold tight. Hold tight, Vance. I just saw a horse. You saw, you saw a... Honest. Honest, Vance, a horse. Oh, you, you ain't ridden him. Yeah, you, you ain't ridden him, are you? Now, what kind of a lump do you think I am? But, Vance, you got to hurry because the lieutenant's going to shoot him. Shoot a horse? Shoot a horse? Well, are you going to stand there gawking? You're coming oh, along. Yeah, come on, come on. Show me the way. There. There it is, Vance. Right there. It is. It's a horse. That thing? It's a horse, ain't it? A horse. Are you the man who wanted to see the coat before we destroy it? Oh, yes, sir, but, uh, Lieutenant, you, you ain't gonna shoot it. I'm afraid so. It's too far gone. Well, but it's only a cold, sir. You wouldn't be right to shoot a cold while well, he ain't lived yet. Well, I don't think he'd live anyway. Well, but if he had the right man to take care of him, you know, it's sort of nurse him along, make him feel like he had a friend, you know. Well, look at him, man. He can't stand up. His eyes are glazed. His body is one mass of bites. But his head, Lieutenant, just look at his head. But it's a, it's a fine head. He's a great coat. That's your nash on a pen. No, I'm afraid I'll have to shoot him. No, well, wait, you can't do that. Take it easy, kid. Uh, what were you going to say? Oh, uh, uh look, uh, Lieutenant, I... You know, back in Montana, I had a coat that got tore up by a cougar, and uh, he was much worse shape than this one. Lieutenant, I took that coat back to the corral, and I nursed him like a baby, and I could do the same with this one now if you just give me a chance. Huh? Well, he might be a typhus carrier. I'll, I'll disinfect him, Lieutenant. I'll keep him away from the men. I'll, I'll, I'll just watch over him like a baby. It will help him, sir. Sure. Vance has just got to have this coat, sir. Well, uh... Uh... Well, tell you what I'll do. Now, I have to walk down the trail here. Now, if somebody got this coal out of here by the time I came back... Yes, sir. But if in, uh, let's say, a week, if I find a coal around here that's in as bad a shape as this one is, I have to shoot him. Understand? I understand, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got you. Lieutenant. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to tend to some business down the trail. I'll see you later. I got a horse. I got a horse. Uh, that's open to questions. <laughs> But, the Vance, how will we get this, uh, this back to camp? Oh, wait, I'll, I'll talk to him. I want, what's this? Come on, boy. Come on, come on, get up, boy. He, uh, he didn't even hear you, Vance. <laughs> Looks to me like they got a lemon, Vance. Oh, we, we got to get him off this trail before the lieutenant comes back. Oh, he's so weak, he can't even stand. Yeah. Looks like he might die right here. No, he's not going to die now. We're going to get him out of here. We'll carry him back. Here, come on, Benny, this side. Daddy, you yeah, take that uh-huh. side. I'll carry back here. You're listening to Jimmy Stewart as Vance Gorman in A Guy Who Had to Have a Horse on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for a better living through chemistry. As our second act begins, Vance Gorman and two of his friends have carried a sick, starved, emaciated colt back out of the jungle to a shelter near their barracks. And Vance has begun the long, careful work of making his dream live and stand up on all four legs. Now, look, Vance, you can't keep coming back here for this stuff. Bandages, DDT, iodine, mercuritone. But, Sammy, I, I gotta have it for Montana. Now. For six days, you've been doctoring that colt, and he looks worse now than when you started. Maybe he's been drinking the iodine. No, no, no. It's just a little while longer, Sammy. Now, you're the pharmacist, mate, and you can get me this stuff. Sure, all right. but, but what, what good's it gonna do? Sammy, I've got one more day to get that horse on his feet. He's a great colt. He'll make a great horse, but, of course, not if he gets shot. Okay, okay, you talk me into it again. (laughs) 
see. I don't know, Vance. I can't see much improvement. But his eyes, Benny. Look at his eyes. Yeah. Look, he's got them open. He sure, sure, he's got them open. But he don't look good. Now, listen, don't say things like that. Montana's my horse, and I say he's better than the day we brought him in from the jungle. Well, I hope the lieutenant thinks so. Oh, he's got to. Now, look, look, Benny. Montana knows me. Now, watch when I go near to him. Now, watch now. Now, look, baby. When the lieutenant comes, you've got to look good. How about it, boy? You see, Benny? He understands. You hear that? Watch it. Watch it. The lieutenant. As you are. Well, how's the horse? Oh, fine. Fine, sir. Yes, sir. You see those eyes? Just bright as the summer sun. And that coat. Uh, what coat? Uh, well, it was, it was shiny this morning. It's sort of dusty now. Uh, I'm afraid he was too far gone, Gorman. Oh, but, sir, he's coming along fine. I... I had horses in Montana much worse off. The one that was uh, torn up by the cougar? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That what happened to him? He died. <laughs> no, but he was much worse off than this one. Much worse. And he would have pulled through, only I got sick myself and had to give him to somebody else. But Montana, he's much better. He, uh, he hasn't stood up yet, has he? Well, uh, well uh, 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 Lieutenant, I'll tell you, he... he I, I just didn't think he was strong enough to do that, so when he wanted to, I made him stay down. Did he try to? Did he? Uh, well, uh, and no, not exactly. Yeah, but uh, moved his legs. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I saw him do it. So did Benny, too, didn't you? Oh, sure. Yeah, he moved his now legs. Look, man, I'm as much against doing this thing as you are, but I can't help myself. Well, if the old man found oh. out... Hey, he's trying to get up, hey. Oh, baby, Montana, come on. Come on, baby, get up. There's the other leg now, Montana. Oh, the other leg, that's it. He is getting up. Sure, sure he is, sir. Come on, Montana, come on. Come, come here. Come to me, baby. <laughs> Yay! Up, oh, come here, baby. Come to me. Oh, baby, you made it. You're up, Lieutenant. Ain't he beautiful? Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Just don't let the cook see him. Carry on, man. Benny, man. Eddie, I, I got a horse. I got a real live, honest to goodness horse. <laughs> Oh, guys, how's he look now? Oh, boy, what a horse. I got a hand at the advance. You're a magician with horses. But what are you going to do with him? We're, we're shoving off tomorrow, you know. Shoving off? Yeah. Sooner than we thought. Well, maybe they'll let me keep him, huh? Oh, now, look, Vance. Having a saddle in the Navy was a gag. But taking a horse aboard ship, that's out. But this just ain't any horse, Benny. Why, I nursed him. I brought him back to life, practically. You know, he just naturally died. We... Left him here on the island and went away without him. Sure, sure, I know, but what are you going to do? Well, I don't rightly know, man. Like I always said, if a man wants something hard enough and it's right, he'll get it. And right now, I can't think of anything I want more than having Montana with me for good, Navy or no Navy. <laughs> This is it, Vance. Yeah, I know, Eddie. Where's he? He's tied up behind the shack over there. You, uh, you got any idea yet? Yeah, uh, I sort of figured something out. Yeah? What? See that girl over there? Huh? Yeah, father of the USO. So what? She's gonna get Montana shipped out of here with me. You kidding? Nope, I ain't. Oh, brother. I've seen crazy guys before, but you and that horse. You just stay where you are. Uh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, hello. Oh, you're one of those uh, show people, aren't you? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, uh, certainly was a great show. It was really swell. Oh, well, thank you. But, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Call me Kathy. Oh, thanks, ma'am. Uh, Miss Kathy, as I was saying, the show was swell except for one thing. Oh, really? What didn't you like? Well, it, uh, it ain't that there was anything we didn't like. We just thought that there was something missing, that's so. all. Missing? For example? Well, uh, for example, say, uh... Oh, something like a sort of a trained animal. Horse, maybe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, it's like this, Miss Kathy. The singing was good. The singing was fine. The dancing was, too. But now suppose you had a real trained horse, one that could untie knots with its teeth and bring water when you'd whistle for him and count up to ten with his hooves. Or... Boy, that'd be a hit, wouldn't it, huh? Is your name by any chance Vance Gorman? Yes, ma'am. And is the horse's name Montana? I got a horse named Montana, sure. And the Navy won't let you take him with you, is that it? 
Oh, I guess I sort of made a fool of myself just now. Oh, no, no. Please don't think that. No one ever does that if he does something close to his heart. No, I've uh, heard about you and your horse. Everyone on the island has. I see. You love that horse, don't you? I do, ma'am. Well, Mr. Gorman, if it's humanly possible, our troop will have a trained horse when we go back to the States. Cones, concrete, sidewalks, and double feet. So it looks good. I wonder how Montana's going to like hey, it. Hey, fast. Looks like you're famous, kid. Here, get a load of this newspaper. The sailor... What's this? The sailor who had to have a horse. They mean me? Hey, don't mean Admiral Halsey. Come on, come on, read the rest of it. Well, it ain't nothing, that is. It's just a lot of newspaper. Hey, here comes Montana and the dame who got him off the island for you. Hello, baby. Hello, Mr. Gorman. Oh, Hello, Mr. Gorman. Oh, hello, Miss Well, you and Montana are famous. Reporters will be here any minute. Oh, you've got to get me out of this. Oh, but you can't go. Oh, look, don't you see that? Uh, people have been reading about war and battle. Then they read about you and Montana. And it did for them what Montana did for you. Gave them an ideal. A sane ideal in the middle of ugliness and misery. Well, I'm glad, Miss Kathy, but now we're back home, Montana and me. Well, I don't want any of this, Miss Kathy. I, um, Montana could say anything. He wouldn't want it either. Vance, a movie company has offered you a lot of money if you'll take Montana to Hollywood. To Hollywood? That's right. And one of the newspapers wants to put you up at the finest hotel in the city. All expenses paid. Well, for what? For the exclusive rights to the story. But there ain't any story, ma'am. There ain't any story at all. No story? No, ma'am. Uh, let me talk to him, miss. Look, Vance, you got gold-plated stuff waiting for you. What are you thinking about? Me? Well, I'm thinking about a flea-bitten, mangy cold lying out in the jungle. I'm thinking about a man named Kelly. A lot of boys we ain't going to see anymore. You see, they had the same thing I had. The same thing? Yeah. An ideal, Kelly called it. A dream. Theirs was the same as mine, only mine's got four legs and people can see it. That's the only difference. So you see, Miss Kathy, that ain't any story. And if there was, it wouldn't be exclusive like something you can shut up and show people for money. Well, anybody's welcome any time to come and see Montana for free. I had a hunch you'd say something like this. Well, I'm sorry I caused all the ruckus around here, Miss Kathy. And, and uh, gee, I, w I want to thank you again for bringing Montana back for me. I, I, th I think I better be getting along. It's all right, then. Well, how do you like this? You're crazy, Vance. But kind of nice crazy. Okay, Eddie. Come on, Montana, let's go. Uh, where you going? Me? Oh, I figure when we shove off again, I'm going to have to do it without Montana. We've got a lot of things to talk over. <laughs> you know something, Eddie? Hmm? What? There goes the only sailor in the United States Navy who's going to spend shore leave with a horse. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gene Whitman. Do you save old paper, string, and things like that? Some people make a hobby of it. Most of us don't ordinarily do it. Conscientious as we tried to be, we even found it quite a chore to save old paper during the war when it was badly needed. Here's an unusual little story about saving paper or making more paper, which amounts to the same thing, by saving trees. In papermaking, logs are brought in from the forest, stripped of their bark, and chipped by machinery. The chips are chemically treated to remove color and impurities, so as to get a light-colored paper. The sap, the tar, the resins in the wood are washed away as waste. What remains is cellulose, the basic material of a tree and the basic material of paper. Cellulose is easy to bleach. This is the way many higher-grade papers have always been made. But using just the cellulose means that only half of each log is used. The rest is waste. A more economical way, paper manufacturers have known for years 
would be to use the whole log. And there is a process called the groundwood process that does this. But it has never been practical to bleach this groundwood pulp to make a good commercial paper. Recently, DuPont discovered a process for doing just this. Groundwood pulp, bleached by the DuPont method, can be used in larger proportions to supplement chemical pulp in the manufacture of high-grade paper. The process is much too complicated to go into in detail, but it centers around the DuPont chemical compound, trademarked Solozone sodium peroxide. The DuPont process offers a more efficient, less costly way of producing many papers, not only for magazines and books, but for catalogs and directories, tissues and toweling, mimeograph sheets and writing tablets. The finished paper has a smoother, more velvety feel, doesn't have the harshness found in papers containing unbleached groundwood. It is highly absorbent, which means not only that it takes ink well in high-speed rotary presses, but the patient tissues and towels made of it take up more water. This chemical development can greatly increase the amount of printing paper made from a given amount of wood, cut operating costs of paper making, and finally make an improved groundwood paper at lower cost. No small achievement for one chemical compound Solozone, one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, here is Jimmy Stewart. Thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say a little something about the victory law. The war has been won, and that's a great thing. But our victory has brought its responsibilities. The men who are wounded... There are families who have in their windows, or maybe only in their hearts, a flag with a gold star. We owe a measureless debt to those men and to their families. You can begin to help to pay some of it off by buying victory bonds to the limit of your ability. Our victory has, been, has made us secure from war and in peace. And now we've all got a chance to make that security stick. Let's all put every extra dollar in victory bonds. Tonight, Cavalier will bring you glamorous Celia Hasso in a tale of romance from the fields where not so long ago the battle raged. A play about a Dutch refugee girl whose faith in herself and in the future was restored by an American GI. Listen next week to I Count the Days starring Celia Hasso on the defunct Cavalcade of America. Stewart's next picture will be It's a Wonderful Life to be produced and directed by Frank Cabra. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade play was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Russell Hughes and Bernard Fines and was based on the story by Greta Palmer, a sailor who had to have a horse, published by Reader's Digest. Tonight's Cavalcade players were Victor Rodman, Horace Murphy, Harry Jackson, Sidney Miller, Eddie Marr, Joseph Julian, Herbert Bygren, and Mary Jane Cross. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Celia Hasso in I Count the Days on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.